Hello and welcome to the Radiate Wellness Podcast with your host, metaphysician, Reiki master, and hypnotherapist, Christy Clemens Hoffman. Each week, we will discover teachings, tips, and tools to radiate your best life ever with practitioners, authors, and luminaries to help you on your path. Wellness, joy, peace, abundance. What do you want to radiate? Welcome back to the Radiate Wellness Podcast. Today, we radiate fire with Celine O'Donovan, who's the author of Gifts from the Devastation, What Cancer Taught Me About Life. Welcome, Celine. It's so nice to see you. Oh, thank you, Christy. And I'm delighted to be on your podcast today from the other side of the world. (laughs) As we can tell, you're from Ireland. I am. I'm from... For anyone who knows Ireland or has heard of it, I'm from the west coast of Ireland, so right on the Atlantic Ocean. So next stop America is what we always say. (laughs) You go out to the islands, the Aran Islands that people might have heard of, and then you continue on and over to New York. So um, I'm facing that direction literally right now as we speak. So yeah, (laughs) little need the binoculars. (laughs) So um, this book, Gifts from the Devastation. So, you know, it reminds me, as we were talking earlier, it reminds me of a book that um, the publishing house I used to work for um, put, put out. It was called Now That I Have Cancer, I Am Whole. And it kind of reminds me of that. So mm. let's let's start with the beginning, the devastation part of it. How did you react when you discovered that you'd been diagnosed with cancer? Um, this often surprises people <laughs> when I say, but the first, obviously the first thing I felt when I got the news was shock and devastation. Um, but once once something in me sort of accepted it and it sort of landed in me the next thing I felt was relief now many people might find that really an odd thing to say um, because I'm not diminishing how difficult it was it was horrendously challenging but in another way my life finally made sense And I'll say why that is or was, because for many years prior to my diagnosis, particularly two years, I was feeling very burnt out. I was feeling um, really without joy or fulfillment in my life. I felt like I'd lost my way. My work, everything in my life really wasn't resonating or giving me any sense of fulfillment anymore. It was like the systems that I was in. It was like some sort of, it felt like some sort of prison. I don't know how to describe it better than that. And there was some part of me recalling inside of me for something greater. And I had written that even before I was diagnosed with cancer. I knew there was a, there was something calling inside me. And even it's an important message, I think, as well for listeners. I had many wake up calls prior to cancer. And the last one was a car accident just a year before. And I wasn't bad. Nobody was badly physically injured, but I was really shaken up. Body, mind, spirit. I, I'd say I had a little breakdown mentally. Nearly. I couldn't focus function, couldn't be on the phone. It was like all this static and it was really difficult. I couldn't process anything. But I was very stressed in the lead up to that. And I had known I have to change my life. I really have to change it. It was too fast. It was too stressful. It was too empty. (laughs) All of those things. So I'm not saying that's the case for everyone, but that was my story. And I had felt that for quite a few years. You know, I wasn't living in a way that was right for me. Sure. So something when I got the news finally was able to just let go and say, nothing is expected of me I can just stop that was the biggest thing I can stop I can stop and um, Mm -hmm. and I did it took me two years because I'd I had been told I'd gone to I I looked after myself body mind spirit and I had gone to a kinesiologist and they had told me I was suffering from adrenal fatigue which I knew because most of us probably are I was on adrenaline for years 
um, empty, like fumes, I felt like that. And there was an imbalance in my life, you know, of giving energy and receiving energy. I knew that there was just seemed to be one way all the time. Um, so, yeah, it, as, as odd as it might sound, if you knew my life beforehand, it actually it made sense because now I could add up body, mind, spirit. Yes, this is it all coming together. This is the manifestation of a life that hasn't been working. Oh so, so, and the cancer is the, you know, sorry, just to say, even the cancer to me is always, I see it as a suppression of my creative energy and who I am. So what happens is it grows inside. And that's what the cancer was. It was the, the energy turned inwards as opposed to expressing myself in life, which I didn't. Um, wow. Well, what, what type of career field were you in? Before? Um, I was in marketing. I worked in bank, the banking um, industry for a number of years. And then the final 10 years before cancer, I was in a university, um, which I loved for many years. It's, I, I know often this is the case with many people. We look at each other and we appear to have it all sometimes. And people look and go, lovely job and she's paid well and she's a home. But I had a lot of emotional pain and trauma I hadn't processed um right. the earliest probably being a marriage breakdown when I was very young um we have since were great friends now but there was huge emotional pain because we really are soulmates we still are um but the tragedy of that was my husband was gay but that's a whole other story <laughs> for another book but that set me on a downward spiral I think of just so much pain that I think I disconnected a lot from life and the world as a way of surviving. Right. So I think that, I'm not saying that was the reason, I think it was a combination of factors of probably being quite a sensitive empath in the world. And even as a young child, I think many people, probably your listeners, you probably come across a lot of people like this, very sensitive, find our world hard to fit in. So I built, a, I suppose, a facade and a mask and I did my best, you know, I didn't, I'm not saying I had a bad life, but just um, the life that it, it wasn't a life that really I found naturally I could fit in, you know, it was an effort always. Um, so that's where I me feel it made sense finally, because I just knew, I remember driving to work one day just before I was diagnosed going, this cannot be it. This really cannot be it. I'm so burnt out. I don't really believe in what I'm doing anymore. There's something dying inside of me is the only way to describe it. I literally felt like I was dying inside. So cancer almost, as I said, made sense because, mm. you know, I don't know where else there was to go. Right. You know, uh, yeah. and sometimes you need the time as well. Like, True. I really understand that. Um, sorry to check in my battery there so it doesn't pull them out. Um, if I had got something like the car accident and gone straight back in and everything was fine, it wasn't enough. You know, a, a month wasn't enough. Six months wasn't enough. A year wasn't enough. I haven't been back in that system since. And that's 2016. I've gone on a new path and um, yeah, I wouldn't change a moment of it. Right. I mean, it's no harm, no foul. You know, she suddenly needs time off to deal with this and there's no guilt about it. There's, you know, there's, there's no harm in taking that time off and everyone understands, you mm. know, but if we were to say my life isn't working right now, I need to figure something else out. I don't know how many people would be that accepting yeah, of it. Exactly. 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 I, I sort of, I remember saying that to someone, you know, I, I'm sure that if I had, you know, we all, I know this is a very difficult, yeah, I was going to go somewhere else with that, but it's maybe a little bit difficult for people. It's like, I'll give an example even before, at my lowest point, I wouldn't say I ever really considered suicide, but I can say that there were many days I wished I didn't wake up. This is now after the pain of my marriage and just shoving everything down and it just didn't seem to be getting better. And I didn't understand it and I didn't understand how to process it. At the time, there weren't people, maybe that just as if we were living in a different world. 
But at the same time, we often say, to, you know, if we hear a story as tragic as that, why didn't they reach out? Right. Why wouldn't somebody reach out if they're at that point? Right. That's kind of what we yeah. think. Yeah. Right. And I think because you had you had said even, um, you know, sometimes we do need the longer break that if if you're on the treadmill at work and it's challenging and you can't always just say I need a time out. So what I mean, really, when I talk about the suicide, which is, you know, so tragic is I remember feeling almost close to that at some point. And yet as well as as well as people mean and as much as we try to support each other it can be difficult if someone just comes if you look like everything's fine and you come and say look i'm really struggling i don't know if i can do this it you know it isn't always you know it sometimes it it just isn't met in the way that we need nobody's fault it's just isn't it it's it's I felt that. I felt I had tried to reach out at times and yet I seemed to look like everything was fine. I was a great actor. So most people would have thought it's not really that bad. She's OK. You know, she's struggling, but she's OK. You know, um, when you so that. Yeah. 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 When you know in your heart that I just feel like I can't go on anymore. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. So then you have this what we would consider a devastating diagnosis and then mm-hmm. thought, oh well here's a here's a chance to get off the treadmill there's a mm-hmm. chance to explore what's not working and mm-hmm. um, so did you seek out treatment right away did you go through the whole treatment the, the, the cancer treatment is it all of the yeah chemo. now i had mm-hmm. pardon oh the chemo the radiation yes 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 now everybody's different here but I would have up until cancer been pursuing in some ways quite a holistic type of life and a natural life and I worked with healers so this was an interesting thing that happened and I had a very good friend a shaman healer who I did a lot of work with and I he insisted not insisted he offered me to go down and visit him just when I got the news before anything to do with treatment he did now, whether many people, it might seem a bit strange to people, but he did a lot of healing work on me, but he also did a type of shamanic ceremony where he basically removed the cancer from the, the lump uh, that I had. And I could see it because it felt different straight afterwards. It felt dead. The flesh had gone from quite fleshy, you know. And now most people in my family and people around me would say, that's crazy, but Mm-mm. I was there with them and I knew it. But at the same time, so I came away and I came back to Galway and there I was, there were here was the hospital, the doctors, the consultants, and you need to start treatment, you need to start treatment. And there was another aspect of me like really struggling with this and really afraid and didn't know what to do. Now, what made the decision for me to go through with treatment, which now I understand I did need to do for my own learning, really, um, was that in that time they discovered that the the cancer had spread to my lymph nodes. So although it wasn't far advanced, that the cancer was still present in a different place. So, and they were sort of urging me. So I did go ahead and while I was struggling with the decision, I was referred again, we're always shown what we need, a beautiful woman, a healer, a chiropractor who lived in Ireland. And again, she, she works as a spiritual midwife. That's that's how she sees herself. And that's what she is. And I had a session with her by Zoom at the time. She was in India. And I said to her, I'm really struggling here. I'm not sure. I want to make the choice that's for my highest, you know, my highest self wants for me but I'm so in the stress of you know what to do I can't even hear myself so she reassured me by just saying look you know don't you know don't see it as you know if I go through treatment I'm sort of denying this other aspect of myself that is the ability to heal it's what you know you don't know that whatever you choose to go through and the experience may serve whatever purpose you're meant to serve in the world in the future don't see it as black and white as that it's not as if i do this it's wrong and then i could relax and something in me knew yeah this is the decision you need to make and i understand it as well because 
firstly, it's helped me relate and understand and connect with people who've gone through something similar, Mm -hmm. the trauma of going through all of that treatment. Plus, it gave me the time that a quick, a quick spontaneous healing, as wonderful as it was, wasn't probably what I needed. I had to go on a deep inner journey of healing myself and becoming whole again, as as you mentioned at the beginning. And that may not have been possible if I had jumped straight back on the treadmill. <laughs> right. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So, and so it what, made sense. And what, what gifts mm-hmm. did you discover along the way? What, why gifts from the devastation? Because I'm, wow, so many gifts, everything. All I, what I can say now is I'm living a life that's, so me, it, I mean, the first the first big one is I reconnected or connected with who I really am, my soul, essence, source, God, whatever people want to call that. And how that materialized was through treatment, because I gave a talk. I was launching my book last a couple of weeks ago in the west of Ireland in Doolan, near the cliffs of Moher. We get up a lot of American tours there in a beautiful location. And I was trying to describe that 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 uh, magic, you know, that miracle that happened. Because as I went through treatment, my body shut down. I remember I went back to my own house. I was living with my mother at the time. I went back to my own house. My body shut down through the treatment. My mind, which had been going one thousand miles an hour, was again slowed down through the treatment. And over those weeks, this all I can describe: this peace, stillness joy, love, everything just started to just blossom in me is the only way to describe it. I I went into this still place and I felt so loved and supported and guided and cared for. And I had never been able to go back into my body. That's another been a big gift. There's so many because in I understand now and it's it's a big passion I have in, in, in supporting others is You have to clear your trauma and your emotional pain and all of that energy because you have to come back into your body to feel that connection with your, you can't feel it up in your head. You have to really come back into the body, but it's difficult to do it if you're running from all this, which I was, this pain and unresolved trauma. And I was so afraid of it, believing I'd never get through it. So this allowed me to come back into my body to remember it and see that it was safe, that I was looked after. I was in this beautiful energy of just love. And then from there, that just sort of started to radiate out like a radio. Well, I, the only way I can describe it is it's just been radiating out into my life in every possible way for the last six years. Um, the greatest gift has been creativity. What are, what are the greatest gifts? Um, expressing that creative energy that I was describing was merely turning inwards. Mm -hmm. So this essence that is each of us, that is so unique and was not being expressed because sometimes our world tries to bring us all into this one homogenous way of being. And my, my, my understanding and truth is that we are all so, we're all just an essence, an aspect of that source essence here to express something very unique and this is how we all benefit in the world when we're all shining our brightest um but our systems haven't necessarily encouraged that so you know they uh, to me it's a whole bigger thing about control and you know keep people keep people are in fear and if people are feeling very disconnected from their own truth sure no you know yeah practices or modalities did you employ to come to that place okay um wow so many um i did a lot of deep with that spiritual midwife i was talking about we did a lot of journeying i suppose she does a lot of spiritual clearing so she calls it divine clearing so to a lot of people it might be somewhere between reiki and um, she's a very high frequency. So even being in her, I, I think the key to becoming whole and back into our, I suppose, our, our natural state is our frequency. When our frequency is low and our energy is low, you know, we're more open to. So I know with 
Reiki as well. I did a lot of, you know, Reiki healing work with her. I, um, gosh, I've done so many. I do a lot of breath work practices now, diaphragmatic breath work practices to support energy moving through me. I have worked with healers who've gone back. Sometimes we've gone back on uh, in timelines and different lives and clearing trauma. I've worked with a lady in the States around trauma locks, releasing trauma locks, you know, that we, something may happen in our life and emotionally we get frozen there in that aspect and that energy sits within us. So mm. I've done a lot of work on clearing, you know, that, that, that energy, like it's really, I can feel it like life, is energy in motion our life force it's like nature everything's moving but as humans we often we we don't know necessarily we're a little bit afraid and we don't know how to move with it so we get stuck we we resist something that's coming up and it's painful so we shove it down but then all we do is get stuck in that pain and stuck in pain for years you know and um you didn't have to be that well it did have to be that way for me but so I, I do a lot of but I still do a lot of like keeping the energy moving a lot of meditation mm. um I've done a lot of I do I trained in sound healing so I've got lovely Tibetan bowls with very high frequencies that I play um I get out in nature a lot so uh, mm. everything really I, and I also went to a kinesiologist I think I was saying who helped me identify where I'm a big fan of, I don't know if you've heard the book Power Versus Force by David Hawkins. So again, it's about, you know, how the, he does the scale of consciousness all to do with energy and vibration. Mm -hmm. So if we're down in low vibrations of like guilt and anger and all that, they're the energies of where disease or illness lies. And the higher your vibration, you're into joy, you're into love, you're into all of those lovely vibration so it's very important that we we do the things that increase our own vibration did you know that radiate wellness is more than just a podcast that's right we're also a comprehensive holistic wellness practice find out about our services practitioners and upcoming events at radiatewellnesscommunity.com while you're there Visit our podcast page to read more about our great guests and even donate to the podcast. If you like our podcast, you can help in other ways as well, like subscribe or follow us wherever you're listening right now. Tell a friend, a family member, or a coworker about the great content you find here. And if you wouldn't mind, please give us a thumbs up, a five-star rating, or a positive review. Sounds like a small thing, but it really helps. You might like to know about our Facebook communities while we're at it. We have a free community, the Radiate Wellness Community, on Facebook for news and great free content. Our subscribers group is Radiate U, as in the letter U, but also, well, you. There you'll find curated replays of past classes guest interviews, and more. And now, back to our podcast and back to our guest. And another very simple thing was I became very clear on, and I have no guilt about this anymore, I did at the time, being only around people and things and situations and um, everything that raised, you know, that raised me up. Anything, on, I had quite a few unhealthy relationships. I knew nothing about boundaries you know, very basic, they're not basic, but um, I allowed a lot of things in my life that were not good for me. And so that's been a big part of that too. You know, I, I, I have no, I have no um, guilt, let's say, about saying, no, this, this situation or person or relationship is not working for me anymore. I wouldn't miss, me. but I think what happens is you gradually increase your own vibration. Those sort of things fall away in a way. Right, don't they? very naturally. Exactly. exactly, exactly. You don't have to. I used to think I'll have to go out saying things to people, but you don't. You don't. No, Isn't it's kind it? of like, well, whatever happened to so-and-so? I have Exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. And so like how do you else. feel your life is now? What changes have you experienced? 
Well, so many. I didn't go back to my old job, as I said. Um, I was led into writing and I'm a big believer in, I just did an interview with the local radio station this morning and he was asking me, well, you know, what's what's um, different now or how did you go about making change? And I suppose the big thing, firstly, I, I said to him was really this whole surrender at some point in your life, if you know the life you're living isn't working, which I did obviously through cancer, and you know you need to change, one of the first things you have to do is let go because we're not, I really can see that we're not shown, okay, tomorrow here's your new life and it's all perfectly packaged for you. You have to go on a journey with it. And I was guided every step. I call it the breadcrumb trail. Once you take the first step and you say, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I don't know what's ahead. I'm going to take this leap of faith. All I know is, and I'm going to follow my guidance and I'm going to tune in and I'm follow my heart and follow my passion and my intuition. And straight away, within about a few weeks, maybe months when I was getting better, a friend, person I hadn't seen, no accident in about 20 years, showed up and mentioned a course called The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. It, yes. I you know, heard of it? Yes. Yeah. The publishing so, company published that too, that I used to work for. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. So this lady had, tra- had trained in, you know, giving workshops on it. And I was like, I'm not an artist. This isn't for me. And no, no, it's not about that. But getting in touch with your creativity and it's a spiritual approach to your getting in tune with yourself and your creativity. So it was perfect. It was a beautiful group of women who met in her house by the sea every week. Very gentle, very supportive, just exploring lots of different things, doing different exercises. And after a number of weeks, she'd been an old school teacher of mine. I hadn't seen her in years. She's a beautiful lady. And she had just retired and gone into this work. And she said, one day we had coffee. And she said, you know, I still wasn't back at work because I was severe fatigue, which happened for a reason to stop me from right. going back 100 miles an hour again on the treadmill. Mm-hmm. So she said, you know, you're talking a lot about what you're learning from this and how it's changed you for the better. And would you think of writing something down? I said, no, 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 I never thought of that. And I always, I really feel this in life now. You know, often other people have the key to the next stage of our life that we maybe cannot access ourselves and we need someone else just to unlock it. So I went home, got out my laptop, and that was, I could say the rest is history. I sat down and I just typed for six months and got everything down. And that led me on a path of publishing a different book first, then this book. And this is sort of the the world and life. And then I trained as a life coach. Um, So, yeah, but it's a step by step. I'm a big believer. I say this time when you will be held once you once you tune into that part of yourself and you honor your truth and your fire, as we talked about, your 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 truth will get louder. It'll get brighter. It'll get stronger in you. You know, it needs time. It's sort of it's. I sort of say it radiates out, like you say, or it just starts to, I, a beautiful spiritual teacher I listened to once, and he said he talks about burning away everything that you are not, and that's what it feels like. It's not that this aspect of us hasn't been there. It's been covered by all the limiting beliefs and conditioning and trauma and all of the, the stuff that a human life gathers. But it's like burning that away. And then you radiate out your, and I can feel that getting, the more I say yes to it, the stronger it gets. You know, you're fanning the flames. It's beautiful. Isn't it? You know, it's like Rumi, the beautiful Persian poets that always seek those who fan your flames in life. And it it is that. Everybody has this fire that wants to radiate out. But we need help. We need help, don't we? Well, sometimes we need to have a devastating diagnosis in order to have that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah Slowly. yeah yeah because it's not something I, I mean maybe it can be but I haven't met too many people who find this wholeness within themselves without some sort of trauma or challenge or because it's like we need the disruptions that you know it's like something going along it needs to be disrupted before you know you can find something new like it's 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 very difficult to derail something that's going along even if it's not 
maybe for functioning in the best way, but it, it, it's functioning and it's it's going along. It's it's quite difficult to make the decision. I'm just going to derail all of this and start. I admire people who do, but um, well, it wasn't possible for me. <laughs> it's amazing how once we we know things are not working, that you cannot go on like that. It's amazing how the universe will kick you out of the nest. And for sure. We don't make room for that growth. The universe is going to say, okay, no, you're doing this anyway. And so mm. this happened to me with when my marriage came to an abrupt halt. And again, when I got laid off from my corporate job. And okay. it's the universe just saying, no, seriously, you need to cut all these things out of wow. your life, right? And and move forward in a new way. Now, something I like about your book, Gifts from the Devastation, is you actually provide gifts. You provide exercises mm. and things for people to experience themselves. Do you have any that you would like to share with our audience now? Sure. Um, yeah. Well, one, the first thing I did is I added a gift in it at the end of every chapter because mm -hmm. that was sort of relevant to the story and it brought me back into the gratitude for the way my life was going. But in the end, the book, just to say to people, is sort of structured in three parts. So I would just say to anyone who's watching, whether you've been through cancer or not, everybody goes through trauma and this is really or goes through a devastation so this takes the reader or the listener i recorded an audio book that i've narrated myself as well if someone is more comfortable listening um on the journey of my life pre-cancer what it was like an average ordinary person going about their business in this world trying to function the breakdown of what that was like to go through and what that started to open up in me and then towards the end, I move it into what I call co-creating your life. So, yes, you've gone through this breakdown. Yes, you know what's changing. How do you go about, you know, practically taking some steps? So what I developed is a, is a tool I call the Inside Out Living Indicator. So basically it's, you know, everything as we know is inside. And that can sound a little bit maybe abstract for some people if you're not used to sort of coming back into your body and who you are. So I basically map out 10 aspects that I see that are key that we as human beings have influence and control over. You know, we don't have control over the outer world, um, but we can influence the things that make change that you know we are creators that's ultimately what i came to the understanding of i am a creator i create through my imagination my thoughts my feelings my words my actions my energy um and i'm definitely proof of that because i have created a different life so i i map that out for people so i hope and i give ask lots of questions and i give lots of suggestions um the book is not intended to be, uh, I guess I say, one size fits all. All I am do, trying to do here is share a perspective and a story of mine. And I hope that will just maybe um, trigger or guide people into their own reflection on their own life and maybe how they might make change if that's what they want to do. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so, yes, the the book is, is full of these um, exercises and gifts that you share after each chapter, um, including the inside out living. Yeah. So useful. Um, yeah. So what would you tell somebody who has um, just maybe recently been given a diagnosis that's very difficult or gone through just as a loss, something that's disrupting? It's going to be different for each of us, but I think the first thing is you have to allow yourself feel it. You have to honor the pain, the whatever it is you're feeling. I, I happen to say it sort of made sense and was a relief after a while. But in the initial devastation shock, I, 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 to be honest, I don't feel, and I think most people who've gone through something very shocking will probably not remember it in hindsight because they, you sort of go into an autopilot. It's like a survival mode. Yeah. So I think you have to allow yourself whatever time or space you need to just sort of let, even let process, start processing what's going on um, and be very gentle with yourself 
to, to reach out. I mean, I wasn't shy about getting help. And from day one, there was a cancer support center near us. I went straight to them. I went straight to the spiritual healer. I went straight to a GP who I knew was a herbalist. I I spoke to people who I knew would be, um, you know, could be there for me. And again, I would say to anyone, whatever you're going through, another thing that surprised me was no disrespect to people, but the people often you think will be there for you are sometimes aren't able. And often the people you least expect end up being a rock. Um, I had one particular lady in my life. She wasn't family. She was a colleague through work. And she literally just, she was just there. She was just there. She never, you know, over um, extended herself into me, you know, on my life. But she was always there. So I think you have to give yourself yeah, the time and the space and, as I said, get, get you need to find the right people. Really important because we all resonate with different people. I needed people who could get, who could hear me and understand, mm -hmm. you know, if I needed to cry or I just needed to get angry. Um, and I needed quiet. I said, don't be afraid of, in any trauma like a cancer or something, if, if you're of the view like I am that everything's connected and mind, body, spirit, everything, you will be looked after. This this greatest breakdown, is, as, as tragic and difficult as it is, it really usually, it, it is always trying to break open something in you, something greater. And yes, there's pain. And I, I did an interview with the wonderful guy in the States last week with the podcast Grief to Growth. And he talked about not wasting your pain. He had gone through a very traumatic experience using losing his daughter suddenly at the age of 15, no warning. And he's since gone on to dedicate his life to helping others, um, you know, as he says, not waste your pain. You have to honour it. You have to be in it, but you don't want to get lost in it and that it serves no purpose at all. Even if you can't understand why something is happening now, you will. You will at some point. You will when the time is right. Um, so, yeah, I would just say to, to hold on to that, even at the times that you feel you can't go on. Um, mm -hmm. Right, right. Uh, yeah, it's 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 very personal, you know, isn't it? it? It's very. I don't want to sound very casual or as if it's it's easy. It's not. It's not easy. Uh, it's very, isn't it? You know, it's any sort of like you said, a marriage breakdown, losing your job. But how did you feel like in that? What would you say was the how you managed to, to, what was key in helping you move forward from it? Support. I had lots yeah. and lots of yeah. support from yeah. so many people around the world. Wow. It was amazing. Um, wow. And truly yeah. believed that things work out in the end. If they don't, then it's not the end. Very good. That's true. That, that's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> and there's always a choice, isn't there? Like, I think we we're led to believe, well, I always lived nearly as if, not a victim, I was very conscious of I didn't want to be a victim. And that's why I sort of said that in the book. There is always a choice as hard as it, there is, isn't there? Even if it's a choice to go, like you said there, I don't believe this is the end, or, you know, things will work out, or whatever. There's a choice somewhere. It's almost, it's at such a deep level. I knew I'd nearly made the choice before cancer. Something may have made the choice. This is not going on anymore. This is not happening anymore. I would die. I, I really believe there is a huge cost to suppressing the human spirit. So if we can look on, I'd say to anyone, if you can look on every challenge that comes your way as trying to help you express the spirit and the unique amazing being that you are in the world that's all it wants you know that's 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 isn't it that's our part that's how i see our, our the reason we're here to experience and yes. express 
you know, this this absolutely fabulous essence that is us. And all that life is doing is saying, hey, you're gone off track down a cul-de-sac. We need to get you back on track. And sometimes we don't listen and we need more than a few nudges. We need something major, isn't it? But it's all, I, I, I can say that I am living, I, I will say that to anyone, you know, I am 1000% proof that life is always trying to get you back on track, always. And I haven't met one person who would say otherwise, you know, you know, unless they've got very lost in it, which I understand, but anyone who has come through and been able to process and come out the other end of something challenging will always nearly say, like you said there, you know, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't mean the human experience doesn't have its, its challenges, but what do you do? <laughs> You know, we can either choose to, um, you know, think that it's this is happening to me or you can think that this is happening for me. That's exactly the point. And that's what I was saying in the book. Yeah, I, I knew at every moment and it's the way I live my life now. Even if I react to something I don't like, I straight very quickly, I'll go back and go, OK, what if this was happening for me? How would I what would I do? How would I view it? What would I do differently? Yeah, and I I do it now with everything, even, you know, it could be a small thing. It could be I was meant to have an interview with someone and they cancel it and I might get annoyed. And I go, no, well, I, I, I absolutely, I don't even have to work at that. I just go, that obviously wasn't meant to happen. Maybe in terms of where they're at or where I'm at or what might have happened if we did at the interview or... Mm -hmm. And it makes life, doesn't it? I just find life has become very simple for me. There's quite simple. I think the, the laws of the universe or the, you know, the, 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 the way there's quite a simple recipe for living life. It doesn't mean it's always easy, but it's actually quite simple. Right. You know, That's you just honor your truth, you know, really radiate out your truth and your fire and let go of everything that doesn't serve that. And the third thing, sorry, which I didn't get around to saying is be of service, be of service. That's why we're here. Absolutely. To put that gift I'm going to tip my camera up here. I've got a framed, if you're not watching, <gasps> you don't know what this is, but I've got framed spoons up here. Yes. On my shelf. And so the um, kind of the, the smaller one is for eating and the larger one is for serving. The larger that's one is beautiful. larger because it's more important to serve than to take. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, I love that. And I love the picture of Dolores Cannon. Oh, you recognize you do. her. Oh, I do. I do. And you do the quantum healing. I do. You? I do. Oh, I'm fantastic. a hypnosis practitioner. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you I've met him. Yeah. There is uh, one of my compatriots, well, several of my compatriots there in, in Ireland, but one who's also a level three practitioner is Trina Sharon. I don't know if oh, you haven't her. heard of her. No. Oh, where is she based? Actually, I might look uh, her up. I should know this, don't but worry. I'm so sorry. Don't worry. She's uh, no. on their website. Yeah. yeah. Trina Sharon. Trina Sharon. Lovely, oh. lovely lady. So. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, because I'm feeling called to go in some sort of, I've done a little bit of, I did some work in craniosacral therapy years ago. I trained a little, didn't go the whole way. I trained in Reiki. I didn't go the whole, it's funny. I, something was stopping or blocking me at the time, but I've, the I've, right I've, time. Yeah. It's and I was obviously meant to go on and write and that is a big calling still for me, but I, I do feel, yeah, uh, that's, well, no, that's uh, nothing by accident. I will put you in touch. So, <clears throat> excuse me, Celine, it's been so wonderful talking with you about your book. Um, I hope that it all just continues to go super well. Now, do you have a website where we can find out more about what you've got going on? Sure, I do. It's CelineO'Donovan.com. So it's www.C-E-L-I-N-E-O-D-O-N-O-V-A-N. Um, I don't know if I sent to you or if it helps. I have a link tree, but I mean, most of it's on the website. It's just I have a mailing list of people who want to get and, you know, connect up with me. Wonderful. I have a link to the audiobook. I have a link to the print book. And yeah, so I think so. To... Yes, yeah, send me the link tree and we can put that in the show okay. notes as well. But we'll be definitely fantastic. put your 
um, put your link to your website in the show notes. And uh, I would urge anybody to get in touch with you and find out more about your journey and what you've got going on and to get a copy of the book because it's very it's delightfully written, very um, uh, down-to-earth, very personal, and I love that type of narrative, uh, very easy to read. So thank, thank you. you so thank you. much, Celine. It's been lovely being with you today. You too. Thank you so much, Christy. I appreciate it. Radiate Wellness is an international community of holistic and alternative healers dedicated to helping you create spiritual, energetic, and physical well-being. To learn more about our practitioners, services, classes, and events, or to schedule an appointment, visit us at radiatewellnesscommunity.com.